just every day is a, a battering. Um, I, I've, 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 I've always tried to do my best for for everything I've done, you know, my fire service career and, and everything else and, and mountain rescue and, and things like that, you know, so so helping people in a lot of ways and to to realise that somebody you think the world of is taken in such a, a horrific, pointless, senseless way and then having to wake up every day and, and think about that is very difficult. And then to go to court and hear what's gone on to that endeavour, to for that end, is just, it's just, it's beyond belief. I mean, it's a much used phrase, but it's just unbelievable. I'll never understand what's happened because I don't think there is any understanding of it. But I need to know, and I need to try and make some sense. And uh, and to be there every day and and hear the detail of the planning and the execution of it in every sense. And for why? It, it, it's uh, going to court. Does it help? Um, probably it will do eventually. I have to take the opportunity now in the hope that it will help me. Uh, at the moment, it doesn't. Meeting Sarah Williams was an act of trust in a way. Whenever you meet anybody, and and I meet a lot of people through everything I do, and so to be in court and 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 to have that read out. Uh, to what end I'll, I'll never quite understand um, but I just felt very exposed but I felt I was part of a process that needed to happen to make sure that the just outcome prevails in this and that, and that, that the right people are sent to prison and, and removed from it and that would be a sense of justice to to some I don't know what justice is really Sadie will never come back <laughs> but I just feel I had to play a part in that I was at this chill factor with some friends who were, were t also teaching, and uh, and Sarah was one of the the students, and she was, I was taken by how driven she was. And she'd only recently learned to alpine ski and chose telemarking as another discipline towards her instructor scheme. So the initial attraction was that it wasn't an attraction per se; it was just somebody. Wow, she's prepared to do this, and was doing very well at it, and that started the. The relationship. Yeah. Um, it was very intense. I was flattered, um, foolishly so, as it, it turns out. But uh, she was half my age. Uh, alarm bells should have rung, uh, but I was enjoying the the, the the attention. In the first instance, I, I, I shall regret this forever. I was unwittingly naive. Um, at the time, I let my guard down. We'd, there was a, there was a lot going on in in, in life. He'd said he had been. Um, incredibly busy at work. Um, there's no excuse for sending the text messages back and responding. Um, Sarah knew I was in a relationship with Sadie and I felt she knew that, or hoped, or I didn't never really thought about it, that, that actually we'd bought a house and I'd moved and whatever. It transpired that didn't happen, or she didn't know at that time. Um, and and I, my mum was, was diagnosed as being terminally ill and I was asked by my mum because there were the family members who were working whatever if I would look after my mum and she was supposed to live till possibly Easter and she died on the 19th of December and we nursed her at home and, until she died and I was involved in the, the care of her and we've never been able to grieve for her death either. And I think as I say I was flattered and, and, and to get a bit of there was texting, there was nothing more, there was no meeting, there were no phone calls, there were no dinners, holidays, no plan. And one of the last texts I ever sent to Sarah Williams was to, she was pleading for many months to meet uh, in the past and, and I just said yes I would meet but don't shout at me. And the reason I'd sent that text was this has to stop and that it became apparent to me she didn't know that I'd, I'd moved in with with Sadie and, and, and that I'd sold my house and we'd got this big life plan together. So it was a moment of, of, of weakness. I was a fool, unwittingly naive. We, to meet Sarah when I, I did, this was a, a young, engaging, yes driven in terms of skiing, but she was uh, eloquent, um, she'd ridden horses, 
she was a skier, she was of that ilk, she was outdoors, you know, I'm surrounded by mountaineers and people and we, we rely on each other. And I never got any inkling at all, I never saw any uh, anger, any venom, uh, any crosswords in the, in, in the short time I knew her. I, I, I knew of Katrina Walsh purely from a Facebook picture that's been all over the press when they were in Thailand. And that, I, I'd never met her, not talked to her, never even heard her mentioned. So until the, I'd heard that she'd been arrested, that was the first I knew that, of, of Katrina Walsh, other than a photograph. Early on, I probably met Sarah Williams six times in that period, totally, maybe ten, but I, I, it was insignificant. Uh, it was a very short relationship, but in that very short time, I felt that she, it felt like she was trying to plan my life out. And here was I at 57 and creaking at the seams, and she's young, and I, I didn't want my life planning out. And, and so there was a degree of, hang on a minute, I, I don't want this. And that was all I ever saw, you know. It was, so if, it was, if there was any obsessiveness, it was this, she was getting more possessive than obsessive. It, I've, I've spent eight months now, every day, questioning my motives of, 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 of why I, I texted Sarah back. Some people may feel that that was, made me culpable in that texting Sarah in some way has, has led to Sarah murdering Sadie. I'm, I'm told that this planning of this murder was 17, 18 months ago. Um, so, and that in that time, I've, I've questioned myself as to, was there anything I should have spotted or could have spotted? And of course, since the inquiries happened, the things have, have come to light and we're able to track it back. So things like my alarm going off in my house and that the keys had been copied or stolen and copied and cut and my goodness, you know. So I don't feel responsible for any of that. I, 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 if people feel that in some way I've, I've let them down, that um, I am responsible by texting, I am I'm profoundly sorry for that and I'll regret it forever <laughs> and I never for one minute believe that the few chuck away ridiculous texts could ever lead to such atrocious events and such unimaginable loss for not just me, I know that, but for Sadie's family, her kids, our friends, my friends, my family, the communities. This is this is so massive, so wide, so wide ranging that it's. It, this is not just me. This is, you know, this is massive, and I, I, I'm terribly sorry that this has happened. I just, I want to express my my horror at what's happened. That I, you know, I, I can't understand that what, what what Charlotte and Harry are going through is just. I wake every day and, and, and think about that and, and, and if in any way they feel that I contributed to this I am, I've been a fool, I was unwitting, I could never ever ever have seen that some ridiculous throwaway text would lead to such a savage horror murder of their mother, their, their loss must be beyond belief and so if they feel that, that I was contributing I apologise wholeheartedly, I, will, I can never ever come to terms with that.